speaker, Victor Crum, please welcome Stan Yanevsky! Okay, um, we have a thing going on between us, so I want you all to say, I mean sing what I'm gonna do now. Say, Eo! Eo! Again, Eo! Eo! as a member of the Order of the Phoenix. And lit up the screen as the metamorphosis. Please welcome to the stage the brilliant actor who brought the beloved Tonks to the screen. Shit, it's great. <laughs> that is 5,000 people screaming back at you. Okay, here we go. You know these next two actors as the Jokester Brothers from George Weasley. Their fun characters turn jokes into jobs, inspiring one of the most outstanding shops and experiences in Diagon Alley. Please join me in welcoming James and Oliver Phelps. We're gonna, we're gonna have to keep doing this, so here you go. And hello, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Flawless. All right, here we go. We met our next guest. Her character accompanying her mother to King's Cross Station to see her brothers off as they departed for Hogwarts. She portrayed the youngest member of the Weasley family. Please welcome the talented actress, Bonnie Wright. You have to, Bonnie. Together? Sure. Come on. Help me out. Or Jenny. In the middle. Here we go. <laughs> oh! Oh! All five of you together. Oh! All five of you. One, <laughs> two, three. Oh! Oh! All right, all right, all right. You guys want to hear some questions and answers, am I right? No. I just want to warm you five up with just a few uh, sample questions before we get out to the crowd. Uh, just going to throw this one out here. If uh, any of you five have an answer that you want to throw out there, feel free. Uh, but here's what I want to know. What, if you had a job in the wizarding world, what might it be? I would be working in a candy store, eating candies all day. Absolutely. And then going into the gym after that. <laughs> to work it all off. I would be a chef. Okay. It's quite cool to be a magical chef. Just throwing stuff together and it making it happen. That'd be great. Okay. Um, I'd sell um, travel uh, as in like a pork <laughs> And you could like upgrade, so you could have first class walking, which would be like a really nice plush boot. Yes. <laughs> and then you could have like a pony, which is like, I don't know, like an old family. <laughs> that's the discount. That's the discount. That's the discount <laughs> travel. I'd be the uh, night bus driver. Yes. <laughs> if anyone's ever got a night bus, you see some interesting things, so I imagine you see some amazing on the uh, visiting night bus. Yeah. Absolutely. And I could be one of the little talking heads, those things. <laughs> Jets. You're far too pretty for that, Bonnie. You're far too pretty. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and turn it out to the crowd. I think I'm going to go and start with Kevin over there with our Ravenclaw. Who do you have over there, Kevin? This is Emily from New Jersey. All right, Emily, what's your question? Uh, hi, guys. I have a question for 
would have been for the entire panel. So I understand that some of you were really young when you first started filming the Harry Potter series, but I was wondering what your first days on set were like for you. First day on set, if any uh, memories uh, pop out that you want to share? Yeah, um, the first, I guess I, I only had one scene in the first film, so my first few days on set were really big. Um, and I was on platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross Station, and it was, I guess it was unusual as well because it wasn't in a studio, like I never had any studio shooting in the first film, like it was on, on, it was in a train station that I had gone to, like, you know, as a Londoner, you go to King's Cross, but now you're on platform nine and three quarters, a station I had yet to hear about. Um, and I was nine and three quarters. I later realized, I made the, I made the calculations and I realized that I was exactly nine and three quarters on platform nine and three quarters. Um, and I remember being freezing cold, like it was meant to be a summer's day and I was just like shivering cold and so nervous about everything that was going on that I'm sure that was just like a, a kind of a nervous shake slash cold shake I was having. But the family, I mean, the day, day one was, it was all about the easy, so, and it was, and it continued to be for me throughout the series. And Julie Walters, who, who plays Mrs. Weasley, was very much a perfect mother figure on a day like that, so it was very special. Excellent. How about you, fellas? Do you have a... So, um, our, first, um, our first day filming was actually the last scene in the uh, Sorcerer's Stone. So you know when they all get on the train to leave? That was our first day. So first of all, I learned that they don't film in order. Right. Um, and also I learned when you're on a steam train, don't put your head out the window as it's leaving, because I just got covered in soot. So yeah, two, two life lessons good, there. Good warning, good warning. The same. Um, my first day, first day I went to set, I was amazed by the canteen. I mean, it was just huge, so much food. And uh, the first day I went in, they did a plaster cast of my arse and my face, so I could be on a broomstick. And then, well, that was like a few months of like, you know, different costume changes and different like, trying to, you know, decide what tools are going to look like. And then the very first day, my scene was with Mad-Eye Moody. And he made me feel, you know, he kind of relaxed and I was a bit nervous. And all, every, every job, the night before, I can't sleep. Sure. It's like just one of those things, you just, you just get over it, you have to just work your way through the insomnia. But he made me feel good. Very nice. Oh, um, my first day was filming actually in the maze. And it was the scene where Victor meets um, Cedric and Harry runs in between them. So technically that fight. And um, we didn't quite know what to do. And then Mike just came across. And he said, listen guys, I want to do, you know, just play. And we're like, um, okay, we will go really stiff. And then he just started throwing himself on the floor, on the ground, into the hedges, you know, just like pushing things around. And uh, he basically got all muddy and dirty and said, this is what I want you to do. So we just did what he asked and we got it. <laughs> it was my first day, I thought, okay, if we don't do it, like, it's in a playground, then why not? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, so, uh, Brian, who are you with back there? Hey, I've got Jordan from Buffalo. Oh. Hi, guys. Uh, so I have a question for Bonnie, James, and Oliver. I was wondering what your favorite Weasley family moment was to film. Your favorite Weasley family moment on screen to film. Um, I, last, I liked asking for where my jumper was. <laughs> I still don't know. I still didn't, I never found it. So. Um, that was fun coming down, and I think Americans quite like that because jumper is not really a term to use. So jumper, people like to say to me in a British accent quite frequently. Um, so yeah, apparently it was on the cat, but I never found it. <laughs> The Quidditch World Cup, that was a lot of fun when we filmed that in the, the tent, which was really small, and then it was, when we were filming, like, you all go into the tent, and there's like five or six more than that, all crammed in this tiny little tent, and then obviously, 
uh, we then cut it to a huge tent inside, that was a really good fun. But to be honest, I, it may sound a bit obvious, but the burrow scenes, any time we were in the burrows building, that was pretty much like a family environment because the, the ceiling was very low, especially on us. Um, and it's just a very cosy thing, so even in between setups, we would just go and chill out on the sofa and just hang out like a normal family. There was also a moment where we took a bit of Weasleys to another household. We had a, a Weasley like Christmas at Grimmauld Place and that was only ever seen really in the background of the moment that I think happened between what was happening with Dobby, but it was just fun with you know bringing that Weasley colour to this grey, dark, dusty home. I like that and there was that weird cat the one that had like a face that looks like squashed pancake. <laughs> and they were trying that the, the trainers were trying I remember that that scene. Yeah, it was really lovely Julie Waters was being so warm in that, yeah, and the cat. Very cool. Uh, so we've got Erin. Where are you, Erin? I am right over here, bud. Cool. I have Jenna Slytherin. She's a Florida native. She has a question for the panel. Okay. Okay, guys. So I have a question for the whole panel. So if your character had an ultimate ending, what would it be and why? Interesting. An ultimate ending for your character. I would have died. <laughs> Raise my, you know, weird kid. Right. <laughs> um, I, I would, uh, if my character, an ultimate ending would be to have a worldwide franchise of these <laughs> Everywhere. Fantastic. <laughs> so, like, to the point where you couldn't go anywhere, it would be like, I don't know, a uh, 7 Eleven. There's always one. There's always one in every corner. Fantastic. I'd say that Fred would become like the security of the stores. Because like no one's gonna get past him like that, are they? So <laughs> nice. I mean she becomes a great Quidditch player, she marries Harry, she has kids. I think it's a pretty she great pretty good. Yeah, she did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe if you stayed alive, you'd have played eight for your wolf children, and yeah, so you'd go out, and you'd have that, and you'd play, yeah. <laughs> well, Crumb would have his own statue, like, in the middle of the world. <laughs> so people can go worship him, and his ending would be shooting up in the sky with his broomstick like a shooting star. What would his statue pose me? Oh, it's like a good thing, right? Yeah. I, I like it because it's subtle. It's a snake. I feel like it. I feel like it's All right. Right down here we have Layla. And who are you with? All right, guys. Here I have Brianna. She's from West Palm Beach, Florida. And here's my question. Cool. I just want to say I love you guys so much. Thanks for being here. And my question is, um, what was the best advice J.K. Rowling gave you? And how did that influence your acting? Nice. Uh, did you get any sort of advice from JK herself and what? how did it help you out? I wouldn't say I got any like specific advice, but I remember one, I forgot even the film, it, she re very rarely came on the set in the sense that she A was still writing the book, so very much wanted to stay in that world of, of, of hers. And I think she really trusted David Heyman and the rest of the production team as to like what we were doing and how we were making our, like, our, our you know, interpretation of it. But I remember, without many words, her basically just being like, you watch out. Like stuff, kind of, things are coming for you that are going to be exciting in a way that it was before, I guess it would have already been after knowing that Harry and Ginny have their moment in, in, the, in the fifth book, but not to the extent in which like it, it happened. So I remember her giving me this like really confusing, just kind of eye <laughs> gesture. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it was cool that she never almost, like she was so supportive, but she allowed us to step into that role. And I think if it had been too managed by her, I think it would have stifled what the films were, which is an interpretation that isn't the books, it's the So that was kind of nice that she it was a little bit more hands yeah. off. Yeah. And I think that's what's been fun, obviously, for her in these new stages of, of what, what's come out of the Wizarding World is she's taken a different stance in the sense of the Fantastic Beasts. Like, she's 
you know, she's become a screenwriter and it's a very different thing and that makes sense. Did she, did she give you guys anything? No, not really. She, she didn't give us a heads up when the seventh book about to came out. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, she, as as, uh, as Bond says, we, we didn't really see it too often. She, she, we didn't see her on set too often. But I remember chatting to her once about um, just like the background of Fred and George, like where that idea came from. And, uh, that was that was really interesting listening to it. I don't know if I should repeat it, but it was, just, it was, it was quite cool to listen to. It's very cool. Uh, so. Where's Kevin over there in the back? Who do you have? We've got Ashley from Nashville, Tennessee. She has a question for the panel. Yes. I want to know if any of you guys actually took anything from the set. Uh, Are you sure you're from Nashville and not from Warner Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> She's asking. Uh, I, 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 I stole a lot of underwear. <laughs> not gonna lie, loads of socks and pants. <laughs> I tried to steal the one, but that didn't happen, obviously. I think all of us were the ones, but... <laughs> they stopped they, 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 had, they had that locked Put down. it back! <laughs> I remember by accident taking you Gringotts coin, but funnily enough, I can't exchange it for any other goods than what it is. So it hasn't worked out for any money to but um, No, there were, I mean, yeah, like with the ones, honestly, it was like a check-in, check-out system. Sure. It was it was like higher security than the airport. Like, it was... <laughs> Tick, you know, and you even when they took your one, they like tied this little string around it that had your name on it, and it was like it was almost like you were sitting for class and right. you were having your attendance like. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, and then they get to tour around the world and have all these lovely exhibitions and all of those things that we didn't get to have that you can see. <laughs> that is pretty awesome that people get the opportunity to do that. Uh, where did Brian go? There he is. Here. Yeah, I'm back in the cheap seats with uh, Chelsea, all the way from Orlando. <laughs> I love you all. Um, so my what? Oh, and so my my question is for the panel. Um, I was wondering if there was one word that could sum up your whole experience with Harry Potter and the experience of filming. What would it be? Wow, that that's profound. It's uh, it's a lot of pressure to put on one word, but if you could come up with one word to describe the entire Potter experience for you, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to sing it from my character. Wicked. <laughs> that's pretty good. He literally just stole what I was about to say. <laughs> to the word. Ah. Amazing. Oh, this is that, but it really is. I mean, just here right now, this is amazing as well. So the, the whole thing, not just filming, but experiences like this that we, we still get to have is yeah, truly amazing. Okay, man. She's thinking about it. Natalia's thinking about it. <laughs> we could come back. It's a very British word, but I quite like the word epic. Epic town, epic story. I would say. Also, you had a great costume. The the lady who answered the asked the question, and just amazing. Everyone in the audience. I just love seeing all the robes and all the incredible costumes that you're wearing. It's beautiful. So. What we are getting from all of you guys today and from around the world, the only word that comes up in my head is love. Because you are sharing all your love with us and this, I mean, we're sharing our love obviously with you. And, um, you know, thanks to all of you, we get this opportunity to stand here today and spend time with you. and. I just, no. We do have some love in this crowd. <laughs> Can I make a noise instead? Sure. <laughs> that is perfect. Coaster. Perfect. Uh, where is Aaron? Right over here, bud. There you go. Tanner from California with a question for Stan and Natalia. All right. Hi, guys. Celebration of Harry Potter and what's the 
experience been like and what's your favorite thing that you guys have done here so far? That is a great question. So being your first year here at a celebration of Harry Potter here in Orlando, Florida, uh, what has this experience been like for you as first timers? Pretty amazing. Um, I kind of had a, I mean, I, I kind of got a little amuse bouche of it um, in LA because they've got a Universal there. Um, so I saw Hogsmeade there, but here it's just such bigger proportions of everything. And meeting everyone, so lovely. And one of the women that's been looking after us, Renee, she says that whenever she or anyone works and feels sad, they just go and stand by the entrance. And like within half an hour, at some point, someone will come in like crying with emotion. And that's pretty amazing that, that this place can do that. I've been wandering around a little bit. A lot of the rides are amazing. Just seeing people dressed up, you're like, yes, yes, guys. Um, and the rides are great. The rides are great. Well, this isn't my first time coming to Universal. Uh, I was here at the last DVD launch back in 2011. Um, but it's my first time coming to the celebration. And it's enormous. It's fantastic. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. Um, you know, it's my first time getting a crowd to sing. <laughs> So that felt really good. I feel empowered by this. Makes me want to get you to do it again. <laughs> Shall we start with it again? No, no, are you going to get a rise in the star later? Uh, right yeah, there was a rise in the star. Here you go. Okay. Uh, so, Layla, who do you have with you? Yes, I have Haley all the way here from Hollywood, Florida. And uh, she has a question for our two twins. Hi guys, my name is Haley. I'm not on the podcast. I was wondering if you guys have ever been sorted and if you still want to Yes, yeah, we've done the, uh, the Pottsmore thing, and I was Gryffindor, so... Who else is Gryffindor out there? It's a good number. I was actually Hufflepuff. Very good. Uh, so, we're back to Kevin over there in the back. Oh my gosh. What is happening back there? Well, you, you don't have that kind of time. But, we do have Julie all the way from Long Island, New York. And what is your question? If you were to be sent to ask again for something, what would it be? Yes. That is an amazing question. If you were going to be sentenced to Azkaban, what would the reason be? That is awesome. So I don't know the laws in, in Wizard World. I don't know what kind of laws I'd be breaking. I'd probably break a lot of them without knowing. So I don't know. I'll have a think. I'll probably get sent for killing Ron and taking the money back. <laughs> all traffic laws constantly, yeah. I think probably there's got to be a law against selling merchandise that makes you constantly sick. <laughs> Road trading or something like that, yeah. A lot of vomiting happens yeah, yeah, on your product. Yeah, we're giving like school kids the mumps on that. <laughs> yeah, that can't be legal. <laughs> probably my singing. <laughs> I've, I've been told I should go to prison for singing, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey. um, I feel like I just watched the movie I, Tonya, and you know how she really, well, but it gets a bit washed and, um, and, and ruined exactly what she was trying to do with the other sure. com um, competitor, but maybe as a Quidditch player, like she comes with the Hollyhead Harpies, maybe some you know, maybe I was trying to, to win a certain game and Harry just misinterpreted what I meant. And he didn't send it in a hate letter. <laughs> <laughs> Someone up and she thought 
fell and, and then I, you know, I ended up bang up. Totally misunderstood. Totally yeah, totally misunderstood. misunderstood. Obviously, he doesn't know. I would be totally innocent in all my... Exactly. All my pain. <laughs> hey, Brian, who do you have back there? Hey, I've got Stacy from Houston. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Brian. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Brian. 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 Hey, Okay, that's a good question for our pranksters. Is it for the whole panel or for... For the panel. For the panel. The panel. All right. What is the biggest prank that you have participated in? I'm assuming you mean on set or just kind of anywhere... Correct, on set. On set pranks. This, this is a popular question, this one. It's fun. I mean, we obviously were very, you know, from... As children on a set all together, we're, we're pretty hysterical. Sure. The sense that the hysteria and then the exhaustion and the excitement of the whole set day to day was quite intense. But at the end of the day, we quite quickly learned it's actually a professional set that costs quite a lot of money to to make <laughs> these movies. Um, so we had to be pretty. I mean, you know, we did our job. We came to do something that was very real and. It was very serious, and there were times, of course, where we probably had too much sugar at lunch, and there were those. Then we had this um, room that had um, table tennis and snooker, and, and weirdly ate lots of sugary drinks, but it was almost like our space to to like get out all of this hysteria before we went on set, I feel like. So like, we just like, played loads of games and did our schooling, and then when we got to set, we were quite focused, but I know that's a really boring answer, but... At the end of the day, it was. You know, yeah, it it's work, basically. It's work, yeah. It's a work and it's a professional environment. But I, I feel like you two. You can, just have, have, you, can, you can do it outside of filming, so like on the promo related. tour. It's still related, so. Sure. Um, so, do you mind if I stand up actually? <laughs> uh, so, when you're. Um, no one's asking me? Alright. Um, when you're in. Um, so, when you, when you go on like, the promotional tours and stuff like that, um, you can get a bit mischievous shall we say <laughs> and we're always able to bring a guest with us so we were in, in uh, Finland in Helsinki and we did, a, did the premiere there then went on a, a night out and uh, James brought his one of his best pals with him who was actually uh, one of the doubles on the film and uh, so we were, we were in this club and we were like okay we got press in the morning so we got going and Anthony held back because he thought he was, he was in there with, uh, with the local mm -hmm. or Brian. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Shrek. Um, decided, so he, he, he held back. And the next day, we were doing press. And you just kind of, when, you, when you're in between, in, in between doing the interviews, things go through your head, right? How can we, how can we wipe this guy up? So we basically came up with the whole concept that actually this person who we was trying to get with was actually a socialite. Um, we sold her story. Basically, doing things that shouldn't be doing, naming us, and he had gone to print in the UK, and we were being pulled from all the press tours and not doing any of the other films. So, <laughs> and this is the this is the false story the that you story. Story. Yeah, I've got to get that clear. Yeah. It's okay. The and the, uh, the the team in uh, in Finland agreed that this was a good prank to pull, and some of the, the some of the journalists agreed this was a good prank to pull as well. <laughs> Sure. And so we were. We said, right, um, in between um, well, interviews, we were like, right, dude, we need to see you now because things happen. Oh, so no. he came down. And he's 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 like he's a bit okay. tired, tired, and a bit worse for wear as well. Yeah. So he comes down in the morning, and then we we tell him like as he walks in, we've actually written down the producer's phone number, the AD's phone number. We've actually got the AD, so you're one of his bosses, to message him saying, just don't bother coming back on the next one. Oh my god! And so he literally sits down, we tell him, and he looks like his world is falling apart right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, even, and even the journalists are leaving going, oh, you're a friend. And, they, and they're leaving to do their story time. Oh so he's, my god. he's more and more going into a dark space. And we keep this going for, well, we did a tour of Helsinki, and then we went to around there. And we went to the best part of about 18 hours or so, we kept this going for. Wow. And yeah, it was good. It was more than like, like, we were kidding ourselves laughing with the whole time. And eventually it got to the point where he wasn't even angry, he was just happy that like, that was it. That wasn't true. <laughs> yeah. God, that's fantastic. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, are you still in touch with your cast members? We do stuff like this, or we do conventions, or so many projects. But I don't know about you guys, but everyone here has like 
so many different projects that takes from so many places around the world. Like, I barely have time to hang out with my dad, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's great when we have things like this, because that's when we can like, hang out and drink and catch up. But in my real life, it's like, I don't know, none of us have time, because we're all running around. It gets to be very busy. Yeah, but then we have internet, so uh, that makes things go. And so that, that's the way I keep in touch with the group. Uh, that wasn't on the video. Something, something that you didn't mean to do, or somebody else did. A best, a best blooper. Uh, like a like a mistake that that sort of happened. Uh, oh, I have so many every single time. <laughs> I can't remember one. I'm sorry. Hard to narrow it down. <laughs> well, I remember doing the dancing for the U Ball. We had two weeks of like two of training. And then on the actual day, we pretty much messed up the whole thing. <laughs> um, I didn't see any of the messing up on, on the film. And they took it out, the outtakes also. So um, there was a lot of messing around there. I mean, we had to lift the girls at a certain time, do the whole thing together. None of that happened. <laughs> on the actual film, it did happen. So. We made him work. <laughs> there was, I remember the scene um, when Harry and Ginny are trying to have a moment in the burrows and, and Ron comes in with a plate of mince pies and he sits yes. between us. And it took us hours to shoot that. We, we couldn't, like, we like, just couldn't keep a straight face. Right. So, like, like, it was like, sat down. Most of the time he wouldn't even make it over to the, like, where we were sat before he burst out laughing. <laughs> And so that took ages. That was, I mean, there was a lot of moments where there was just that uncontrolled laughter that you weren't really sure where it stemmed from. It was more just that. I don't know, just being around each other's company to do certain moments. Uh, was, there was no explanation. Right. It was just humor. I mean, just the, was, Rupert had a tendency to, to you giggle around. Uh, and then you can't stop. <laughs> Um, last year, yeah, it was a similar thing. Um, when we're filming the room of requirement in the, the fifth movie, when the it's discovered and the shot is everyone like looking in and she pans over everybody and every time it came to all of the group and myself, one of us would go. <laughs> <laughs> and again, once it happens once, like, if it happens once, it's going to happen a hundred times. So that was. Uh, I mean, she was just an effort, just a... <laughs> uh, where's Kevin? Kevin is over there in the back. Who do you have? I have Cassandra from hey. Ohio. Oh, I can't hear her at all. Okay. There we go. If you could play any other character from the Harry Potter series, who would you play? Wow, okay, that's awesome. If you would. <laughs> he was the best. The best one, yeah. <laughs> I think someone like a creature. <laughs> yeah, I, I pull it off quite easily. Hagrid. Hagrid. That would be uh, amazing. Yeah, you want to play something that's so, I don't know, an out of body kind of experience in the sense that, I mean, as I would have, at uh, that age when I was playing Ginny, I would have loved to have been super tall. Sure. And now I think about it, I would not have liked to be that. <laughs> But when you're young, you want to be tall, so... A massive beard. Yeah, with a big beard. I said this the other day, I think Umbridge, you're right. Umbridge is pretty good as a character. You hate her in such a particularly great way. She's yes. fantastic. Such an evil with a smile, you know? So <laughs> cute. Um, I would like to be a professor like Professor Snape, but my own version. <laughs> So a professor at Hogwarts, making sure everyone is behaving. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so Brian, it looks like we have time for just one more question. So who do you have with you? I've got Juliana, and she's not only representing Gryffindor, but she is representing Brazil. <laughs> and her question is for Stan. to get in the group because they were together since three months before. How did they receive 
Oh, yeah, that's a great question. That's a fantastic question. Um, first, I felt like as if I was going to a new school. You know, that new boy being brought into like in the middle of the year where everybody already knows. Um, I mean, they all knew each other, obviously, so I felt really new. But then what Warner Brothers did was they got all of us together before filming and they had like an introductory period where we played games together we got to know each other so by the time we started filming we already sort of got comfortable with each other and then um you know which brings me to a memory with a prank do you two remember when we had breakfast one day and um, we put vinegar in my dessert yeah. <laughs> And I ate it, and you were quite surprised. <laughs> it's one way to break the ice, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, Warner Brothers did a great job of, you know, making us comfortable. And, um, you know, I never felt like the new boy. I felt as if I was always part of the thing. So um, they did a fantastic job. And the cast, of course, was, um, I mean, you know, we are friends still until today. So, and hopefully years to come. So, um, yeah, it's a magical thing there. Very cool. Uh, well, we do have just a couple more seconds if... if and, then we'll, and then we will send you guys on your way. Yeah, I'm yeah just a huge thank you for everyone to, yeah. for being here and to continue the, the world and passing it on to new generations. It's, it's really special, so thank you. So, yeah, thank you so much for making us feel so welcome here. And then, Stand about his dream of being a singer in front of everybody. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just intrigued, like, I said the girl, uh, like, from Brazil, and there's a lot of people who said from Brazil. So I'm just, I'm just interested from like areas around the world where people travel from. So, like, how many people from South America here? <laughs> Anyone from Europe? Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah, obviously, North America. <laughs> like, Asia. There you go. So there's like. Canada. So there's kind of like guys from all over the world, which is the cool thing where we we just take, not, not for granted, but it's, it's just here home for us more often. That it's such a global thing, that it's such a, uh, a cool thing to be part of. And, and we, just, as, as the guys have said, just appreciate so much your passion and, and our gratitude as evidence. I think that's one of the greatest messages about the whole series in general is is the bringing together of, of different people working together to, uh, to vanquish evil. It is a, it's a fantastic thing. Uh, it's a fantastic message. Uh, let's give it up one more time for our panel. Thank you guys. You guys have been so fantastic. <laughs>